This is the patch and release video for version 3.2 of Poyomi Toon Shader, available on Patreon as of June 28th, 2019. It's available to all $5 plus patrons. If you're interested, there's a link in the description below. There's actually quite a bit this patch, so hopefully this video is not too long, but we'll see. So first off is this one right here. Uh, this is just normal maps and whatever, you can do this already. What I've added this patch is parallax height maps. So this allows you to basically make something look like it has more depth, as long as you have a height map for it. So in this case I'm using this, and then if I enable height maps, actually I don't have a height map on this, so let me just grab one. So if I grab the height map, which is just a black and white image, put it on there, and you can see that the tiles actually look like they're protrude, protruding from the surface. So if I look at this tile, for example, I can't see either side of it. Now if I didn't have height maps enabled, you can see like the edges on both sides. But when you enable the height map, it gives it like 3D form. So if you go to this side, you can see this edge. If you go to this side, you can see this edge. And this is just a texturing trick. It's not actually like deforming the geometry at all. So you can mess with the strength so it looks like it's normal. And then you can go all the way to it doesn't really make sense anymore. But that's pretty much all that is. Parallax bias, I just I put it there for advanced users. I wouldn't mess with it. Just stick to changing this. If you have height maps for your model, this can make it look a lot better. But if you don't, don't worry about it. It's only really here because it's part of standard, and it's sort of standard in game development for a lot of things. Next up we have shadow masks. So all this is doing is you give it a mask like this, and it just adjusts your shadow strength. So wherever it's white, the shadows are gonna be as dark as possible, and that's multiplied by your shadow strength down here, so you can still adjust that. This is really useful for if you want like pretty dark skin shading, but you kinda you don't want your face to look really bad, you can mask out, like you can draw gray where your face is and then your face will be like 50% shadow strength compared to the rest of your body. So you can keep a really like soft anime face while actually having proper skin shading on the rest of your body. It's what they do in a lot of anime style games. Another new feature this patch is that things that required lights before don't require lights anymore. They'll actually just use the baked lighting in the scene. So things like subsurface scattering and the reflection you see right here, the specular highlight, does not require directional light anymore. It's still improved with a directional light, but it will actually use the color of your skybox now. So you can see we turned off the light entirely. There's no lights in this scene, but you can still get some specular from the sky. I've also changed in specular I've changed the specular tint by default from pure white to 51, 51, 51. So that's actually the value that standard uses by default. And it looks pretty good in most cases. Before the specular was too white, or it was kind of washing out the rest of the stuff. But at that value, it's a lot more controlled. So I'll just turn the light back on so you can see that. Yeah, it's, it's a softer specular. There's a new addition to emissions. So before, if you had um, an emission mask like this one, you could get this going. But I had a few people who actually wanted, they want to be able to move the mask as well as the map behind it. So I've made it so that emission panning on the X and Y is done through the X and Y values for the map and the mask is actually panned with the Z and W. So if I change this to 0.3 you'll see that the stars actually start moving but you still have the panning rainbow in the background. 
Some people wanted this. It looks pretty good in some cases, so here it is. The Tune Plus folder has been deleted entirely. The only thing that was in there was Texture Blending and Panosphere, and those have been moved into the main shader again because I found a way to... I found a way to make them not take a lot of performance away from the main shader. So if you're not using those, there is actually... There's a drop down here. So if your blending type is off, this shouldn't cost anything. And in Panosphere, if you have Panosphere disabled like this, it shouldn't cost anything. And you can still just enable it at any time. There was a bug in the previous patch where if your alpha values were modified, so up here, if your alpha values were modified, it would not make your model go invisible, but it would make your shadow go invisible. So that's just a small fix. It's fixed now, if that was affecting anyone. Alright, it's time for the star of the show this patch. Flipbooks have gotten totally overhauled. They look a, a lot better. They, don't, they used to have artifacts where the edges would sometimes look blurry or messed up or they'd have random colors that's been totally fixed so I'm just gonna give you an example of how to use them now they're pretty different but they're not too hard to use because I've made tools that make them simple so a lot of people just wanted to be able to take gifts and slap them on their avatars and you can't do that still but there is workarounds for that so I've included a few gifts with the shader it is available in the textures folder under GIFs. So you can see all these. You can actually use these now. All you have to do is right click any of them, go to Poyomi Texture Array, and then create from GIF. So this will give you a texture array where you can see all your settings here. You gotta be careful though, because these can get really big. If you if you have a GIF that's like hundreds of frames you're gonna you're gonna be looking at like a 50 megabyte texture array so if you want to check the size of this texture array you can always just show it in explorer and then just let me move this over and then you can just see the sizes here so this hearts one is only 1.8 megabytes it's not a huge deal so go over to your flipbook settings and then just drag that hearts onto there Go to your heart uh, texture array, and it starts at 0 and ends at 30, so there's 31 in total. So just go here, type your total frames as 31, and then you have to adjust your blending options. So I want it to replace in this case, and now you can actually see the hearts are on it and they're really small so we're gonna or they're really big we're gonna adjust the scale to 0 0.1 0 0.1 and now you can see that the gif is just playing on the side of that and it's a tiny low res gif so it's not gonna look super good but you can actually tile them now so if i click tiled it'll tile that gif across the entire material and then you can either adjust the scale to make it smaller so it looks better or too small in that case or you can go into the texture array and this will actually help you you can adjust the tile the way you normally would but note if you're adjusting the tiling settings for the texture array itself if you untile it you'll actually just tile this little box so just note if you have a gif that has specific frames you may not want to do this like if you have a character that's dancing you don't you don't want to tile that character inside this little box so you would leave this at one so this has actually been made a lot simpler the fps is just 24 or whatever you want you can make it slower you can make it super fast it's up to you the offset is just controlled with the Z and W settings and there are multiple ways you can blend so right now we're just replacing but if you wanted to multiply you could do that as well in this case it's gonna look the same but if you had a color that was darker you can see that it's actually the white of the background is now gray because it's being multiplied by your main color 
and the hearts have been darkened. So if you're on a black model, multiply is just not going to show up because whatever the color is times zero is still just going to be zero. In that case, you would probably want to use an additive blend. So you can just add that color in. And there's actually quite a few GIFs here that you can just use. So like I'll grab this one, for example, and just go down to Poyomi, Texture Array from GIF. Go over here and just slap that on. And I'll set it to additive and tile it. And as you can see, there's a lot you can do with this. And you can still rotate it and all that. So it goes in the direction you want. This has been simplified greatly. I got some help with some of the UI stuff. You can also, if you looked in the settings, you can also create texture arrays from images. All the images need to be the same sizes, but if you have a bunch of images or frames for an animation, you can actually select them all and then create the texture array from the images. And I think that actually covers all of this. So that was definitely the most work because I had to write editor scripts for all of this stuff. But I think I've simplified it quite a bit and it'll be really helpful for people who didn't want to make sprite sheets. All right, I think that covers everything for this week's patch. If you are interested in the patch again, there is a link to the Patreon in the description below. It's only $5 for beta access for the entire month. And if you are interested in any of the other shaders I release, that's $10 a month and you get all of them. So if you have any questions or problems, feel free to join the Discord. There's a link in the description below. Thanks for watching.